The Inhumans stand behind Ulysses, worried. He won't respond to them. His powers are changing at an incredible rate, and his visions are becoming... disturbing. They want to take the young man back to the Ultimates for further testing, but promise they will only do so if he consents. Ulysses says nothing. His mind is elsewhere, in a wasteland. He is approached by a Hulk, who is quickly dispatched by Old Man Logan. The young man is confused and doesn't understand where he is. He asks what year it is, which puts Logan on guard. That's not a normal question. Ulysses explains that he isn't supposed to be here, wherever this place may be. At the Capitol building, Miles Morales stands alone. Police begin arriving, surrounding the young hero. A standoff begins. At Logan's demand, Ulysses explains that he is an inhuman, which surprises Wolverine. They left Earth a long time ago. The young man asks what happened, and Logan only answers with a name. Tony Stark. Above New York City, Maria and Carol are not sure what to do. Hill makes it clear that a fight on the steps of the Capitol is unacceptable, as is Spider-Man killing Captain America, especially since, by now, the whole thing is being watched on live television. Worse still, if Cap dies, S.H.I.E.L.D. will have to admit they were warned ahead of time that this might have happened. Maria agrees to tell the cops to stand down, and Carol promises to get Miles to turn himself in willingly. As the situation gets tense in DC, the cops get the order and reluctantly stand down. Spider-Man isn't doing anything wrong, so they all just leave him. Miles suddenly finds himself alone when he is approached by Captain America. In the future, Logan refuses to elaborate any further on what happens, but he says Stark got pushed too far. Ulysses asks more questions, but a surge of energy brings him back to the present. The Inhuman warns his people that Carol has to stop fighting Tony immediately. In DC, Miles feels it is important to highlight the fact that he has no intention of killing Captain America. Steve Rogers replies that he knows that. They're here for the same reason to prove to everyone it's not going to happen. It's a weird situation even by superhero standards. Spider-Man admits that he's pretty confident Cap will get out of this fight. Steve's been doing this for the better part of a century. But Miles? The young man thinks he's in real trouble. Carol arrives and begins to talk. She insists she's not a bad person, which Cap affirms. But she can't just hope things will work out. She asks for a chance to get Miles somewhere safe and reaches out to him but a barrier prevents her from getting close. Carol realizes Tony is here. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden and this is my recap and review of Civil War 2 number 7. I gotta say I wasn't really looking forward to this one. I figured the event had run its course, and though it had had its moments, it really hadn't delivered in what I hoped it would. So I assumed this and the next issue would be a kind of middle of the road, standard entries, with lots of big fights and a huge ending to really hit things home. Like what these events usually wind up doing. But I've gotta say this issue was not that, and instead I was pretty entertained through the whole thing. At the 11th hour, Bendis is bringing in some pretty cool content. The vision of the wasteland, the conversation at DC, and even Tony coming in a big suit, I'm going to call the Marvel Buster, it was all pretty compelling stuff. I'm not sure what to make of it, and though I'd be reluctant to assume that issue number 8 is going to somehow pay all this stuff off, this issue, on its own, was interesting and I enjoyed reading it. Say what you will about the rest of the event, and yeah, this issue doesn't change much about the ongoing problems there, if Civil War 2 was as tightly written as this issue was, it could have been something really great. More than anything else, it made me remember there are a lot of good ideas being floated around this event. I think if it was structured better, maybe if the conflict was better stretched out to include more of a split in the superhero community, or if it had been a little more emotionally grounded and fleshed out with the main characters, we could have had something great. Instead, it's alright, it doesn't quite do either. It's not the big, bombastic first Civil War in the comics, but it's not the tightly written, emotionally dense piece that was Captain America's Civil War either. As such, it suffers from many problems, some of which it shares with Civil War 1. I. I can't help but feel Captain Marvel is just the antagonist of this story, much like Iron Man was of the first Civil War. 
that's a bit of a problem. And though the comic does make a pretty good point here about like, if they get these warnings from Ulysses, it's kind of their responsibility to act on that stuff. I still don't think the comic did enough to show Carol's side of things and does make her seem to be a bit of the bad guy in this story. At this point, it seems clear that the first Civil War, flawed as it may be, is simply going to be better remembered for its ambition, its depth of the war, and its effects on the continuity. If you've come this far, you'll probably want to pick up this comic. Under those conditions, I do recommend this issue. It's impressive enough, but if you haven't bothered with Civil War 2 at all yet, I'm not sure I would start now. We're at the final stages here, and pretty soon it will be clear whether or not this event was worth our time. Right now, I think not really. Civil War 2 had a lot of potential, but it didn't quite stick to landing. Will the final issue change things? Well, let me know what you think in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to check out our new Patreon page. Patrons get exclusive rewards and help us create more content. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.